give God glory. Amen. For letting it rain. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for for the word today. Amen. For Minister Roberson giving us a word. Amen. And then the choir coming back and watering that word. Hallelujah. See, stuff won't grow if it don't get watered. Amen. Amen. You got to sow your seed and you got to let the rain come down and the sun shine upon it. Amen. For it to grow. Praise the Lord. We give greetings to you in the name of our life-changing King Jesus Christ. And we're excited to be here today to share this word with you today. Amen. Because I believe everybody in here wants to have some success. Amen. And God has given us a plan, or he's given us, how would I say it, a prescription to have good success. And if we want to have it, we have to follow God's prescription or God's plan. Amen. So today we're going to deal with and talk about the prescription to having good success. Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me to the book of Joshua, the first chapter. Joshua 1. Amen. Joshua 1, beginning with verse 1. Joshua 1, beginning with verse number 1. We're going to find these words. Joshua 1, beginning with verse 1. It says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' his minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, somebody say, get up. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou may prosper whithersoever thou goest. Key verse. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and that, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King, Jesus Christ. And I believe that preached already. Amen, Amen somebody. This is the only place in the Bible where you find the word success. But not only is success there, the word comes before it that says good success. And, 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 and the reason we have to, he had to add good success because a lot of times people 
look at successful people and try to pattern their life after other people that we see are, we think are successful, but they may have success in some things, but they don't have good success. There's a difference. You see, there's a lot, we have a lot of young people that, that want to be a pattern in their lives after folk that sell drugs because they got the big cars and sitting on the 24s or 26s. It might be 28s by now. I don't know. I can't keep up. But, but they look at these people that are always clean and got the gold. They got the, they got the bling. Come on, somebody. Huh? And they look and say, man, I want to be like them because they got success. But... Yeah, they got success, but they don't have good success. Hmm. The prescription to having good success. If I could, just for a little while, let me be Dr. Ross today. And not just Pastor Ross. Amen. Let me give you a prescription. Amen. Amen. To help us have some good success. And most of us are familiar with uh, prescription. Many of us been to the doctor and the doctor gave us a prescription. Amen, somebody. And most of the time when he wrote it down, we didn't know what it was. We couldn't even understand the writing. Amen, somebody. But what did we do? We took what the doctor gave us, took it down to the pharmacy, handed the prescription to the pharmacist, and said, this is what my doctor said I need to take. If we would pattern and use the word of God and use the man of God in that same fashion, we would be better instead of coming to church and hearing a word and not going and using the prescription. But when you get it filled, my wife is real good about this. Whenever she get a prescription, she's going to read every doggone thing about the prescription. What's this? Because with any medicine that you get, it's a, re it's a recipe for that pill. That pill, ain't, it's got four or five different things that make up that one pill. Amen, somebody. And each medicine has what they call side effects. <laughs> yeah, I believe I'm preaching. I'm teaching a little bit right now. Amen. There are some side effects that go with it. And many of us, we wanting to, how would I say it, uh, feel or have the side effects without actually taking the prescription. But in order for you to have the good, you're going to have to take and do what God tells you to do. And that's what many of us have been failing. We haven't been taking the prescription. We haven't been taking the word of God and applying it to our life and using it so it could have an effect. I didn't find it how we can take the doctor at his word, but we can't seem to take the preacher. Come on, I know. I know I trust my doctor. My doctor, I need to take this. I ain't going to ask no questions. I ain't, you know, I'm going to go get my prescription. And I'm going to take my medicine. But how is it that a pastor, the preacher, tell you to do something? You got to pray about it. Come, come on, somebody. Or, or somebody give you a word or something. You'd be like, boy, that show, show me that. Give me a scripture to go with that. <laughs> What's a prescription? It, it says, the act of prescribing or directing by rule or that which is prescribed, particularly a, a medical direction or, or remedies for a disorder or a disease. Somebody say, I need a remedy. Amen, somebody. Uh, we grew up, you know, coming up, we grew up and you know how grandma and them had them remedies Sometimes you didn't want to say you were sick because they're going to give you some nasty stuff. Amen. Ask physically or whatever the kind of stuff they would give you. Castor oil and 
Man. There was a remedy to make you what? Get better. Amen. And this is what the word of God is for. It's a remedy to what? Help us get better. Help us live better. We got some disorders in our life. We got some sin. Come on, can I be playing with you? That we need a remedy for. Amen. We know what good is. I think we, we ought to know what good is. Something that's good. The opposite of bad. If it's good, it's something desirable. It's something that is what I say, how would you say valid? Something good. It's, it's, it's valid. That's why I gave the terminology about people that don't have good success, people that do things illegal to get success. It's not valid. It's illegal. It's against the law. See, God wants us to have the sex that's success that's based on his law. Come on, somebody. His word. You got it by doing what thus says the Lord. Amen. Uh, and we, and the last word was success. But what does it mean to have success? Another word is to prosper. Amen. Or to, how I say, accomplish what you have set out to accomplish. And, and many of us, here we are. I'm, I'm reminded of the time when Israel, over and over again, were put into bondage. Why were they put into bondage? Because they were disobedient to the word of God. And many of us, that's where we are now. We're in a place of bondage. We're caught up in something. Or something has us tangled up and tied up. And we need to be delivered. But God wants to deliver us. But the first thing we got to do, I mean, it's going to be three things that we got to remember that's going to be the prescription to have good success. The first one is to know the plan of God. That's number one. In order to have good success, you got to first know the plan of God. Because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen? Let's turn to Jeremiah 29, verse 10. I want us to see something right quick. Jeremiah 29, then we'll come back to Joshua. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, 10, and 11. Jeremiah 29, 10 says, For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, Babylon represents the place of bondage, I will visit you and perform my what? good word towards you and causing you to return to this place. Verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You see, God said, I know the thoughts that I have for you. I know the plan I have for your life. But the problem is you don't know. You see, if you don't know the plan that God has for your life, how can you obey his plan? How can you follow his plan? So, so what, we are, what we do is we, what? We, we make up our own plans and we follow our own ways because we don't know the plan of God. Now, let's go back to Joshua 1 because uh, the first thing that Joshua, God had to tell Joshua he had to tell him, look, the plan is still the same. Come on, come on, somebody. See, some of us get discouraged, and, uh, and, and the children of Israel were discouraged because they were wandering in the desert for 40 years. And they were, but he, when Moses died, he said, he tell Joshua, look, the plan is still the same. Oh, Lord. Uh-huh. The thing that I showed you years ago, I ain't changed my mind, God said. Mm. 
Number one, you got to know the plan of God. And it was God's plan for Israel to go into the promised land 40 years ago before they got here. They at the river now. I want you to know where they at. They've been wandering 40 years. Now they at the Jordan. They're getting ready to cross over. But before they could cross over, God has to establish some things with Joshua that he could establish with the people. Again, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Hmm. Maybe we need to pause that arise because a lot of us really just won't ever get up. God say. You know. Arise means to stand at attention, have, to have God's attention. And some of many of us in here now are already distracted by all kind of stuff. Arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. The plan is still the same. I'm going to give you the land. But guess what? He says, notice how he, he makes us have to do something. Look, everywhere that the sole of your feet shall tread, that means you're going to have to walk some things out. Come on, you can't sit down and expect to receive an inheritance. Come on, somebody. See, many of us want to come to church and just sit down. God is saying, arise. <laughs> He's talking about me. Verse 4. From the wilderness... And this Lebanon, even unto the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. That means ain't nobody going to be able to stop you. Yeah. As I was with Moses. Now, you saw what I did for Moses. That's what he was reminding him of. Now, you saw what I did for Moses. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now, he says, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers, to give them. That's some things that have been promised to us. Listen to me. All the way from, we know we're celebrating Dr. King, civil rights movement and all that good stuff. That's some things God has promised to us. 40 acres in the mule, whatever folk didn't get. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? These are some things that were promised to folk that never received, but now God is saying it's time for us to possess it. Amen, somebody. But in order to possess it, there's some things that we're going to have to do. Let's keep reading. Only be strong, be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest ob observe to do according to all the law. Which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou may prosper whithersoever Thy goal. So the next thing, you got to obey the plan. The first thing is you got to know the plan of God. The next thing is you got to obey yeah. the plan of God. Come on, somebody. Is this making sense to you? You can't obey what you don't know. So the first thing is to know what's God's plan for my life. The next one is to obey the plan that God has for my life. Amen. And, it, and if I do that, he said, whatever I was, so I go, whatever I do, I'm going to prosper. Nobody can't stop your prosperity according to the word. Come on, somebody. 
you know, well, let's stop talking about the other man keeping us down. God said, can't nobody keep you down but you. Stop blaming other folk for why you ain't got it. No, you ain't got it because you ain't working the plans. 